Look, I've defended Joan Felix a lot in my time, and I would apologize for that. And I stand by what I said in his defense in the past. However, as time goes on, things can change. And being an adult isn't just standing by your former opinion to try to convince people that you were right by coming up with any and all different ridiculous angles to look at something. Nah, instead you acknowledge what was true in the past and what has changed since then. That's where I'm at with João Felix. You guys know my love for the guy. Just come back to Benfica, bro. We love you here. Come on. But recently, with the Chelsea move and the comments on Barcelona, I've been watching things through my fingers, so to speak. I still love him as a player, but things off of the pitch when it comes to career choices and some of his actions, I mean, I can't just let it slide. The man guiding his career needs to be questioned, while the open flirting with a club rival is a bit baffling, even if I can see right through the smokescreen on that one. Hey, I'm Adrian and welcome to Rabona TV. Now, if I'm going to hold Lukaku accountable for what he's said and done, I gotta do the same with my boy or else we don't have any credibility, do we? So we're going to go through basically how I see the off-pitch decisions and actions that Felix and his camp have taken and how they are leading to overly complicate his career. Sound good? Now, I already did a video on all of the clashes between Joao Felix and Diego Simeone that I released maybe a month or two prior to him going on loan to Chelsea. Consider that a part one to this video. In that video, I basically detailed with exhausting detail why Joao Felix has to leave Atletico because when there is no relationship between a player and a coach and the style of player that Joao is doesn't align with what Simeone is looking for in a player, then it's time to go your separate ways and put this expensive mess behind you. It's best for everybody. I also went over how attacking players have struggled with their output under Simeone, with a genuinely world-class player like Antoine Griezmann being one of the few exceptions over the last few years, as well as that first season with Luis Suarez. And I of course showed the numbers to back that up in the video, so I encourage you to watch that one as well to get a balanced look at all of this, because in this video, we're going over the mistakes on Felix's part since about January, one of which is only identifiable through hindsight. But first we gotta go back a bit further. We're not going completely chronologically, because I have mentioned this many times in the past, but his move to Atleti in the first place was a bad idea. I'm not being a hindsight merchant either, as I've stayed consistent on this one, hence the reasons why the reason why in the previous video I spoke about how attackers through the years have struggled more and more at Atletico lately. But even looking at it beyond whether he would be a fit at Atletico Madrid stylistically or whether he and Diego Simeone would get along, the transfer fee hasn't helped him at all. And I'm not looking at it as far as a view of the expectations that come with a 124 million euro signing, though that absolutely plays a role more so in the eyes of supporters rather than the coach, but I'm looking at it more in how their transfer fee has almost become the handcuffs that attach him to Atletico Madrid. I care less about the wages, he just renewed right before joining Chelsea, remember? And care more about the fee simply because it makes a move away from Atletico very complicated for João given that Atletico will not want to lose him for a comparatively low transfer fee. Perhaps they would be willing to take a loss on Joao Felix if they were to recoup, I don't know, 80 million of the 124 million they paid for him, somewhere in that region. Who knows, if they got a legitimate offer of 75 million euros, they may just be tempted. But in saying that, it also begs the question of, in this moment, based on the last couple of years, could a club really justify that value for Joao Felix? And again, I say this as a staunch defender of him, but based on the last few years, the most that you could say about him is that it's been tumultuous. And while he still shows flashes of brilliance on the pitch, it's not as if he's burying every chance that it comes his way. Whether that's due to the stop-start nature of his career recently or what have you, it's difficult to justify a price tag for him these days. Even when it comes to a team that was oh so willing to throw money at everything, like Chelsea was. So the man who guided Felix to Atletico Madrid, Jorge Mendes, was doing his job. You know, João Felix left for the release clause. That was the key to the door of releasing him to Atletico, if you will. And if a team is willing to pay the clause, then a team is paying the clause. But when it comes to guiding the career of a player, you'd hope that an agent would try to analyze whether their client would be a good fit for the team they're joining. However, when there's money like that on the table, it can be hard to see the reality through all of the paper. Paper, I mean money. That was a misguided decision number one of his career, going to a team that would never be a fit for him as a player stylistically with the added crappy bonus being that you will forever have a price associated with you that will only invite added scrutiny and make a move away from said club nearly impossible should things go wrong. And they have done. 
Like I said, one of his mistakes has been easy to call out now with the benefit of hindsight. So let's make that absolutely clear here. Sound the alarm folks, this is a hindsight take. This is a hindsight take. I won't be using this against him really. I am simply just pointing out how it was a bad decision in the end. With the way that Chelsea were building their squad and given the precedent they had already set last season, that precedent being that they were pretty mediocre prior to being pretty bad. <laughs> When it became known that Jean Felix may be moving to London, there was some optimism in the air. It seemed like a marriage of convenience. Chelsea were struggling greatly in the attack with the final ball and service to the attackers being one of their main problems. With Jean Felix, someone who thrives when he was playing as a second striker, there was certainly some optimism that this could be a match made in heaven. Chelsea get a creative player on loan without an obligation to purchase him, while Felix got a move away from Atletico and a situation and manager that he doesn't get along with in the slightest. And in signing with Chelsea, with all of this new talent and under a manager who was formerly rated incredibly high, but was yet to find his feet with Chelsea, you can understand the optimism. Sure, you could have doubted whether all of this would work. All of these new signings under Potter could be seen as a lot to ask of a young manager, but honestly, predicting things in football is a coin flip. There are so many variables, so much noise. Does a teammate make a stupid back pass that costs you a match and causes you to go on a downward spiral? Do you pick up an injury? Does the manager get something wrong and play someone out of position? Does a defender who is typically solid end up losing form and becoming an absolute sieve at the back? There's so many things that can go wrong that makes it near impossible to guess it correctly. Or does one of your new signings who looked bright in his opening minutes and like one of your best attackers of the season thus far get a stupid red card and end up not playing again for almost a month. Well, that's perhaps where we can criticize Juan Felix a bit here. Dumb cards happen to everyone, that's for sure, and even the most clean of players can get a stupid red now and then, but this was where Felix just didn't help himself. It gave his doubters further ammunition and certainly put him in on weird footing with both club and the Chelsea faithful, especially for those who were calculating just how expensive his loan was for Chelsea in the face of the value they were going to get out of him while he sat on the sidelines. Overall, he had flashes with Chelsea, but like every single player in the club, he wasn't good enough for them. No new signing was really good enough for them when you consider the club that Chelsea is and the expectation of success that comes with them. Perhaps under Pochettino, he would have been more of a success. I mean, we're seeing Jackson and Mudrik look really good for Chelsea at the moment, while Felix is on the outside looking in with Atletico. Perhaps people who work in the industry would have looked at the Chelsea move as a risky one, but I won't be too hard on them for that, given that they were desperate for Felix to get away from Simeone and get some regular playing time. So it was a risk that they had to take, given the awkward state of affairs between João Felix and Diego Simeone at Atletico. Oh, by the way, speaking of awkward. So Chelsea weren't convinced enough to splash the cash on João Felix. There were questions over his work rate, but mostly the biggest deterrent was that fee that Atletico would demand of any prospective buyer. Not to mention that Chelsea already had Nkunku coming in. They were going to sign Nicholas Jackson from Villarreal, which they did do, and they needed to focus on other parts of the squad, namely in thinning out their bloated squad, if anything. <laughs> With Nkunku, they already had a permanent solution to the areas that João Felix would have occupied. A move for the Portuguese attacker made little sense for Chelsea and cost plenty of dollars. There we go, a little, nothing like a little currency wordplay, eh? I'll be eating up that low-hanging fruit all day long. Anyways, it's speculated that João Felix will have hoped that Atletico's poor form that he left them with would have continued in his absence, which would have potentially led to Diego Simeone and the club parting ways. But that didn't happen. In fact, the inverse happened. Atletico Madrid got better from February onward and once again flew to the top three in La Liga, which has been something of a guarantee under Diego Simeone while he's been with the club, or at least close to it. Again, my stance on it, of which the data backs it up, is that attackers have struggled under Simeone in recent seasons, with Griezmann being the one outlier here. However, two things can be true. Attackers have struggled, but Simeone has still ultimately ensured they stay in the Champions League and fight for the top three each and every season. Something that is taken for granted now, as it wasn't always the case with Atletico prior to Simeone. They had moments here and there, they had that Europa League win, but beyond that, they hadn't tasted much glory since the mid-90s. So 
Felix returned to have to face Simeone once again, and immediately the vibes were off. As we saw Joao Felix openly arguing with Atletico Madrid sporting director Andrea Berta, we would later learn that Felix was furious that Simeone left him out of the squad for an upcoming preseason friendly. No surprise there. Who knows? Maybe he was also upset because he lost the number seven jersey as well. Shortly after the video of that argument found its way onto the internet, just about a week later, Fabrizio Romano had some exclusive quotes. Remember when I said I could see through the smoke screen? George Mendes, I know your game too well, my friend. I have too much experience with George Mendes. And while I'm not an insider or anything, I have contacts. Hell, even if you don't work in the industry, I'm sure many of you saw through this. What was peculiar about the Joao Felix quotes was that they came after the video of him having a heated discussion with Andrea Berta. So you have the discussion, then you have these quotes coming out just about a week later, and the quotes come straight from Fabrizio Romano, not from a news agency or publication. There's no video of him saying it. There's no soundbite. There's no statement from Joao Felix on social media. If I was to speculate based on what I've seen in the past, is we have Uncle Jorge Mendes collaborating with Fabrizio Romano, the biggest agent with the biggest transfer insider, in order to try to manufacture a move. I'm sure Laporta would have been briefed on it as well. You know, just as far as making sure that Barca were actually interested in getting Joao Felix, if they could pull it off somehow. Agents do this all the time. This is how they try to manufacture moves. There are many successes thanks to Jorge Mendes in Portuguese football, but there is also a long line of Portuguese talent that was misguided and sent to Mendes' favorite clubs, Wolves, Valencia, Olympiacos, etc., getting money, but their careers start to go downhill. But yes, agents do this often. They brief or speak to transfer insiders and journalists. They pay them with exclusives. They pay them with information with the hopes that their platform and reach can help force the hand of the club that their player is stuck at. As soon as I saw those quotes, again, without any video of the interview or anything, just with Romano saying, I just spoke with Jean Felix on his YouTube channel, it absolutely reeked of George Mendes. <laughs> because think about it, if Romano just leaked this without the player's consent, then he would break that relationship. This conversation was had on purpose. Honestly, I think they just decided on some lines to come up with together and then Romano just said them. But uh, that's a that's a conspiracy theory. That's a conspiracy theory. I have no way of knowing if that's true or not. Because again, that's me taking an educated guess here. I want to reiterate that. But whether it was Jorge Mendes or Juan Felix himself who fed these quotes to Fabrizio Romano, they did so with this in mind. Try to force their way out of Atletico. However, using Barcelona as your potential landing strip is an interesting choice given a move to Barcelona is complicated. Forget about what happened between them with Griezmann and those two clubs, but it's complicated financially as well. No need to go down the Barcelona finances road. We all know what's going on with them financially these days. We've heard about it ad nauseum, right? And that's exactly what makes this so risky for Joao Felix. Your chosen route is to a side that needs to move a lot of players out in order to bring you in. The earliest that could happen is much later in the window. As of now, all that this statement has managed to do is alienate himself further from Atletico Madrid. Imagine what his teammates are thinking in preseason at the moment. I mean, there can't be much patience for anyone publicly stating that your dream is to play for a club that you are in direct competition with. I mean, come on. Can a manager field that player anymore? These quotes, to me, just fall in line with a string of bad career decisions. The first of which was joining Atletico Madrid in the first place. And the rest we went over here and in the previous video. Who knows, perhaps this scorched earth policy will work out for Felix in the end, but when added to everything else that he has been through or done since leaving Benfica, the net outcome is that he's on a much shorter leash now. He'll be viewed with an incredible amount of scrutiny, which will undoubtedly get to unfair levels, unless he comes back to Benfica, so come back home. We'll take care of you, man. All right, guys, that's it. Those are my thoughts on the scenario. I still love the guy. He's one of my favorite players still, but I just feel like his career on the pitch is suffering much more than it should due to all of these things going on off of it. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to drop a like for me, and hey, subscribe if you're new. Ciao. Bye.